Good morning. Hello. Almost forgot that these streams, we're back to uh, posting them back onto uh, to YouTube again. So got that marker in there. How are you all doing today? Hopefully pretty good. I know it's a new time. It's about an hour later than my, my normal ones, but it allows me a little bit more sleep. So I, I'm happy with it. Um, we are also starting like a, a new focus here. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of we're going to be doing deep diving into the Rust standard library. So I actually have an entire like sort of notion document. Where we're going to play around with this and figure out what we want to do. So like just, I guess, notes, um, things we would want to cover if I wanted to like make a, um, a video on, on each one of these things, which I probably will do at the end. Sort of like that sort of, okay, time to, time to focus in and just like, Hey, this is, this is what an array is, this is how it's used. So let's see. Have here primitive type array. Um, and I think we're just going to go through it. And the, the, re the way I got all of these is I went to the standard library. Uh, and then there's this see all standard items. There's a lot of things here. So I broke these out. Um, I broke all the sections out. So come back into notion here. Uh, basically, we have just all of these things. Primitives. Uh, I have two primitives. Oh, yeah, actually, I want this one. Hold on. This primitives is wrong. This primitives goes up here. Um, basically, we have all the different things in here. So primitives, constants, all that kind of stuff. Going to primitives. It's a table. Uh, so we have array that we're working on now. And uh, uh, like everything that it sort of like it comes from it. So I think I'm going to you. We're going to start with you. All right. We're going to start over with that. And if necessary, we're going to uh, we're going to play around with. Uh, we'll, we'll play. We'll probably play around with uh, like some code, like uh, create them, see how see how that works, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, OK, so. Uh, all right, we know array is a fixed type. Um, we have our type and then the number of them that we want to create. And we've done that before. Uh, in in our our builds um, for the element type t and the non-negative compile time constant size n. So we can't use something like negative, and we can't do something like uh, 2.5. Uh, there are two syntactic forms for creating an array. So a list with each element. So actually, just like here here you are. This is them. Or a repeat expression which produces an array of with n copies of x, the type must be the type of x must be copied. Um, and I think I think that's that's like a pretty huge deal here. Is if you want to do this, you have to have something that implements copy, and sometimes you don't have something that implements copy. So. <laughs> open you back up so two ways to create rays um it's it's basically that entire x y z but they have to all be the same type right so like to me this is really just like type 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 um but the other way is this entire um well, I guess like XXX might make the most sense. And then X semicolon and then N. But that implements copy, so related to primitive. Uh, no, it's, it's this. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. 
it includes. Yeah, okay, I think I, I think this one includes copy. Let's, let's change uh there's this other one too. Let's make it go away. Uh related to primitives. Okay, so maybe requires. Like requires uses. Okay, arrays of any size implemented the following traits the, if the element type allows it. Um, now, that's, this is interesting. So it will implement these traits, but if and only if the element type actually also has that, which is really interesting because I don't think we've seen that before where, oh, hey, this type like has this trait, but only if the parent, like the thing inside of it has it. So like, for example, if whatever is inside has copy, then you can do copy in it. Uh, and same thing with clone and debug and into iterator because it just essentially iterates through everything inside and then just runs the same thing over again. So essentially running one of these things, you can run this on the array if everything in array implements one of these. So um, can run uh, following uh, traits. I guess I can run. I don't know. Execute can like use use the following traits on the um, array instance directly if and only if the um, uh, the contents like the type and the array uh, implements uh, the traits. I guess maybe that doesn't make sense in, in that kind of thing. Maybe I'll just do these in, in that. Oh, come on. Do what I want. Do I want to use it? Okay, there we go. Arrays of sizes from 0 to 32 inclusive implement the default trait if the element type allows it as a stopgap. So wait a second. I want for sizes 0 through 32. So that's 30 inclusive. Okay, so 32 items in the array implement the default trait if the element types arouse it as a stopgap trait implementations are statically generated up to size 32. So if I have like over 32 items in the array, then I, it can't do default. That, so this sentence feels a bit weird to me. Um, wait, does, okay. So does this mean, I kind of want to like create a, um, let's terminal. No, not whatever that is. Terminal. Um, I want to, yeah, let's go to uh, documents, code, builds. What are we going to call this? Um, I think we're going to call this like exploring, exploring the standard library. Um, oh, we should do a rest up too. Uh, update to make sure we have the latest rest. Baraduda, hello, good morning.
How are you doing today? All right, well, that's good to hear. It's uh, it's my Monday today, even though it is a Tuesday, because uh, yesterday was essentially a second Sunday, which is pretty nice. Oh, you may or may not be getting clear of a migraine spree. Oh, no. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope um, I hope that does clear up for you. That's a, that's a pretty long time to have a... Uh, a migraine. All right, so we have a new rust thing. So we're going to do a cargo new. Oh well, yeah. Well, I'm I'm really sorry to hear that. Hope hopefully hopefully things will uh, clear up for you. We had them for basically months and years nonstop. It's nothing new, just annoying. Ah, uh, yeah. I I can't I can't even emphasize with you uh because like i've never had one so i just i can i can um i can feel for you but i don't really truly understand what that is so i'm i'm so sorry um okay so we're gonna do cargo new exploring uh rust standard live Okay, so then we can add this in here. So this is exploring rest in library. Let's add a folder in. There you are. Yes, it's me. Um, okay, so exploring rest in library. Let's let's take a look in here. Um so What uh, are we looking at more specifically than arrays? Um, not really. Um, no, no way. I can't trust myself. That I mean, that true, very true. But I can just tell the computer to trust me because, like, it doesn't know any better. Um, uh, yeah. So we're looking at arrays, and we're just sort of like doing a deep dive into like what the, into like the the standard documentation for it. And so something something interesting that we read here is like arrays of sizes 0 to 32 implement the default trait if the element type allows it but that also mentions that it doesn't after 32 so i kind of want to explore like what what is it exactly does that even mean so let's say we have a struct so we have a struct uh i don't know um location let's do let's do like a location so we have like an x uh, and this is like an F32, Y, which is an F32. So like pretty standard here. And I can derive default, uh, derive debug and default. So that's all good. Um, I need the default. Okay, so hold on. If I If I don't do default at all, I don't think that I can do the shorthand property to create this. It's so like let locations is equal to, let's do an actual array. And we're going to say um, location of like two. Oh, but it's a specific one, isn't it? I have to give it like a specific location because it doesn't know what that is. That's a limitation from const expressions previously, which is still a work in progress. Oh, interesting. So if I then um, debug patients, right, so you won't let me do this because you need an actual value. So I would need to do something like, you know, well, okay, so I can't do that. Can I do this if I give you default? No, not even then. 
I still can't do this. So how could I use default in, in this way? Like, is, is it even usable to use default in, in, a, um, in an array like this? Location, default, default. Wait a second, can I actually do that? Well, okay. It should be doing that, that's what I would think of, but it's not. Uh, and I can't, I don't think I can do something like default, default. Oh, the trait bound marker location copy. Right, right, right. So we need to implement copy. We saw that before. Okay, so this is a way to then use the default for this. So if we debug you. Complete error. So hold on. Oh, clone. We need we need clone also, not just copy. Okay, so that works. Now, can I go up to 33 of these? I mean, it can. You don't think you need the struct initializer now either? Oh, basically maybe we don't need, we don't need this. It, it thinks, well, Rust Analyzer thinks we need it. Yeah, so it doesn't like this. Expected value found struct. Yeah, it does. It needs to be explicit. So I I guess like, so looking at, at this, this default trait, I, I don't know how, like, this, this almost seems like a non-issue because we can't use default anyways. So it's like almost useless to us. Like, great, it has default. So, so what? Maybe like, maybe by the time we get to default, we'll like learn something in default that will like help us understand like, oh, that would have been so much more interesting. Uh, arrays coerced to slices, so a slice method may be called an, an array. Uh, indeed, this provides more most of the API for working with arrays. Slices have a dynamic size and do not coerce to arrays. Okay, so that, that makes a lot of sense too. So um, that's slice method. So coming back to Notion. Uh, basically, I think it's this one. So we do slice. Um, and your type is a method. What was this one? This was copy. Your type is a trait. You can move elements out of an array with a slice pattern if you want one element see memory replace. You can move elements out of an array with a slice pattern. So what does that mean? So I can move like half of the things out. Is this like regex? Slice patterns can be both arrays of fixed size and... Oh, this is in patterns. Okay. Uh, can be... Match both arrays of fixed size and slices of dynamic size. Okay.
Oh. Oh. Like, oh, I see. I see what is happening. Okay, so it's it's matching this as long as the first item in the array is a one. But this one is like literally anything else, but as long as it's size three. Yeah, this arm will not match because the length doesn't match. So the length has to match too for this type of pattern. Squad card is required since the length is not known statically. So yeah, okay. So that's interesting. So let's let's say that I have I don't need this. That location. Okay, so let's We've created um can I do can I do that? I think I could do that. Yeah. So I create 33 of these. And that that works. Um I want to now match um, like the matching of them. That makes sense to me. Like, I, I understand that. What I'm a little bit more confused on is like the, the moving out. So I can move out like two or three of the items and then that's fine. And like those two or three items aren't accessible anymore. So if I move out like index one and two, so if I if I say like let location one equals locations of one that location two is locations two okay so I've moved those out I've taken ownership of them uh, but if I try to debug locations what's gonna happen is it gonna yell at me because I don't have access to one and two. Um, and also something that kind of sucks here. Let's um, let's do this a little bit better. Instead of this location default, we're just going to go back to numbers because it's going to make a lot of sense. So I don't want to create this. I want to do the one, two. We're going to do zero, one, two, three, four. So I've taken out one and two and put them into variables like this. But when I debug this locations, Zero, one, two, three, four. So I still debug everything in there. Is um let's let's like do um a print line or like a debug of like location one and location two. Uh maybe maybe I have to like actually do something with them. So like those are still printing out. Uh, but if I try to use them, if I try to say like let, oh wait, they implement copy, don't they? Oh, so they're copying out. I have to use something that doesn't implement copy. So I do have to do this to location. So hold on, hold on. Uh, let's, let's change um, this to like a size. And you can be like a, I don't know, U32, that's fine. Just just one of them. So then in here. We're gonna do a size of like starting with zero. So we can one, two, Three. Okay, so then one and two I take out. You don't, imp we're gonna not implement copy and clone now. And then we're going to take a look at you.
Now? Are you going to be upset at me? Okay, so cannot move out of size 4, a non-copy array. Consider borrowing here. How can I... You can move elements out of an array with a slice pattern. Okay, so I have to use a slice pattern to move it out. So with this pattern, How do I tell it to like, I want the first one? Is ear filling only in the form with a single dot dot? Oh, I can use dot dot as a sub pattern. So, I almost, hmm, I have to create like a, a sub pattern of that, like a slice of that, which I think is, uh, that's going to be, oh, it's going to be this, that syntax. That size is, and then of that, and then we're gonna use the pattern. So I want, I, then I want to skip the first one. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Cause I can, I can do something like that. I can do, um, like that would give me everything. Yeah, you're no longer known at compile time. Consider borrowing here. So I have to borrow it. So with a size pattern, I might be able to get away with like taking something out. But can I match on that? So match on sizes. Uh, like that. Yeah, look at that. It knows that it has to be the same size. One, two. So zero through three. That that's not. I don't think that's the right. I think it would be like A, B, C, D, like that. Um, and then the other one would be just this unknown here close you up okay so if i take this and let's say i do something like let um b equals and we're just gonna return b and everything else we're not going to do anything with so now can i debug uh b Oh, uh, incompatible types. I have to return something. So here, you can get C uh, if it's not that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, you can be... Um, sure, you're panic. Unreachable. Cannot move out of size non-copy slice. Move occurs because these... Okay, so I can't actually do that. I have to borrow. Um, I guess like it made it sound like I can move elements out of the array with a slice pattern, but I can't actually move them out. I have to copy them out. If I want one element... Oh, I can move all the elements out. 
Oh, I can move all the elements out. If I want one element, we have to have this memory replace. Um, so move source into the reference destination, returning the previous destination's value. Neither value is dropped. Okay, so we're, we're probably going to come in like play, play around to this later. When we get to replace. So that's interesting. So this basically works with a slice pattern. Compatible with, works with, can use. Uh, so it's pattern, uh, and then this is like mem replace. Okay, we'll, we'll have to play around with those later. Um, sort of like understand what that what that is but uh, we're going to continue on arrays now examples let mute array okay so basically just the ways that we can create the array All, all the normal expected things. You can also iterate over references to the array's elements. Right, so we can do, we can get iterators over them. You can use a slice pattern to move elements out of an array. Okay, so that's, that's where, uh, I always thought that this was destructuring, but apparently it's slice pattern. And so that's okay. That's how that's how that works properly. So instead of this like entire match thing, we're gonna have we have these sizes now. What I don't think I can do is I don't think I can say like just remove one or two things, which is gonna be very similar to. Well, is that true? To like a tuple destructuring. So let's say we have like uh, size zero put this into the array like that. This won't work because you're not the right size. Pattern must have four elements. We must do size one, size two, size three. Then it works. It's destructuring like syntax, but it's really using something called a pattern to get it out of there. And now now we can just look at size zero and size is is no longer owned. Like we we've uh, we've consumed sizes and now we own each individual thing outside in their own variables. So. Let's see, um, and extract values, can extract all values from an array using a destructuring like syntax. I mean, from JavaScript. Um, Doing this must uh, remove all. Um, must must match. So must um, a pattern that matches all of the 
uh, elements in the array. Oh, you don't like that. Destructuring, I think that's correct. That's, well, it's, it's probably, it's probably not correct, but it doesn't know how to spell it correctly. So that, that, that's cool. Um, and I don't think I can do something like underscores for these. Cause then it's like, it's still like, Hey, you don't know how to match. So. So to show off that, oh, nope, not that. Thank you and you go in here. Okay. Uh, prior to Rust 1.53, arrays did not implement into iterator by value, so the method call array dot into iterator auto referenced into a slice iterator. Right now, the old behavior is preserved in the 2015 and 2018 editions of Rust for compatibility, ignoring into iterator by value. In the future, the behavior on the 2015 and 2018 edition might be made consistent to the behavior of later editions. Whoa, whoa, they're gonna change the old ones? That, that feels strange. I always figured that they wouldn't do, they wouldn't do that in, like they would just change it going forward, right? Like not change how the old ones worked? That seems dangerous. Uh, Jeff Brones, hello. What about using the dot dot in the slice patterns? Good question. Let's let's take a look. So if I come here and I say, let's say dot dot for these. That works. So if I debug slice size zero, we just get that first one. Okay, size zero. Uh, how about sizes? Are you still there? No, okay, so you're moved. Oh, look at that. You said partially moved sizes. Partial move occurs because sizes has a type size, which does not implement copy trait. Um, so I moved the first one. So can I have access to the second one still? No, once I partially moved something out of there, it's gone forever. So I can use that, but basically I just lost everything else. It's gone. It's it's basically me saying this is the only thing I need. Everything else go down the drain. Goodbye. I I guess it's a easy way of of matching everything, but yeah, it's gone. Um, I'm trying to think like, when would I want to you do that? When, when would I actually want to like destroy all that data? Cause if I want the first thing, I can just get the first thing out of it and then just like not worry about it. Let it go out of scope. Maybe I can do this as a trick to like have it go away immediately. Uh, hello, Chantilly cake delete. Essentially, it's kind of like a delete. It just still like deletes automatically right there. It's uh, it's no longer valid for me to use in memory. Uh, it's probably in memory still until it gets dropped. But that's that's interesting. OK. So uh, that that's actually one a good thing to note of. Um, construct all values when doing this. Um, then like a sub thing to note in here is can use dot syntax um, to match uh, the rest of the array, but that partially borrows 
the array and therefore cannot be used anymore. That uh, data is gone. So what that would look like is um, is like this. You're not bash, you're rust. There. Starting in the 2021 edition, array into iterator will use into iterator normally to iterate by value. An iter should be used to iterate by reference like previous editions. We're still in the 2018 edition right now. So this is this is coming up in the future. Um, okay, so basically iterator stuff will, will start behaving like normal in 2021 edition. That's, that's what it sounds like. Rust by example has a section on partial moves that states the parent variable cannot be used afterwards as a whole. However, the parts that are only referenced and not moved can still be used. So I didn't see that necessarily. Like if we come back to here we see that we got size zero out. And if I try to like debug size one now, I can't. Uh, I wonder if I can do this. Let size, wait, I want a thought. Size one, dot dot. Can I can I do that? Oh, can only be used once per slice pattern. Ew. Huh. Wait. So, what are you gonna give me? Are you gonna give me the last one? Hold on. So, what are you? Your size zero. Your size one. Yeah, zero and three. That gives me the last one. So I get the first one and the last one. Um, okay, so I can still access it through a pattern like that. Um, but can I get like sizes? of like uh, uh so that's zero and one zero one two three so two zero two that one won't let me do it because i can't actually reach into here to get this one i have to use a pattern to get it out or i can reference it no i can't even do that I have to use a pattern. So this is this is really interesting. Let's use this as our example. Um, let's see. Future language versions uh, might start treating the array dot into iterator syntax in editions 2015 and 2018 and the same as the edition 2021. So code using those older editions should still be written with this change in mind. So I'm not super like when did they make this decision? Because did they really make this decision back in 2015? Because like 
People may have been writing this their code with 2015 edition, not even like considering that this was going to be an option. But now suddenly it's like, oh, hey, all of your code is going to break. Even if you update 2015 edition, I, I don't know if I like that very much. The safest way to accomplish this is to avoid the into iterator syntax in its additions. If an addition update is not viable desired, there are multiple alternatives. Use iter equivalent to the old behavior, creating references. Right, okay, so we could use iter instead of into iterator. Use array into iterator equivalent of to the post 2021 behavior. So there'll be a, like a little, there'll be. Replace four with four dot 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 in array equivalent to post 2021 behavior. Okay, so basically like it will require a code change, but it won't be that bad, hopefully. It's showing what those look like. on just like the different arrays. Uh, Carbo Max, hello. Implementations. I mean, obviously that's how we can like impl that. Um, okay, so we have map. Oh, okay, map is nightly only. So map is not something we can do now. I think I'm going to ignore um, nightly stuff. And then uh, one thing that's going to be cool is because in the um, uh, in the release notes that they give out, like, oh, these are now like promoted to like standard. We can then come back and like look at them again once we once we see them like exit nightly only. Um, hello, uh, am I exploring Rust? Yes, I am exploring Rust. I've done some things in Rust before, but I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a crack with any language. Um, turns an array. Okay, so that that's gonna be cool once we do it. Okay, zip as slice as mute slice each ref. Like they're, they're, there's cool looking stuff coming out. Each mute. Wait, these are just all the methods are nightly only. OK, trait implementations. So as mute. As ref um, borrow. Are there some examples of how to build an API uh, like a restful API? Are, are, uh, is this uh, in Rust or in um, in like just any language like arbitrary? Uh, Bull first dad. Hello. Good morning. In Rust, um, I would say that there's there's probably actually several in the documentation for some of the projects. So, for example, uh, Actix Web. Actix Web. Yeah, this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they like their examples will show you like the the basics of it, which um, so this is this is one. And then the other one uh, that I would recommend that has really good documentation to sort of like help out with that would be Rocket. So Rocket Rust. Both of these have good examples inside of them of like how to do um, how to do like basic like, you know, gets and posts and other things. Then you can essentially apply the entire restful pattern on top of that. Um, OK, Jeff Aronius, you're bad. It helps to read the whole RBE section. You need to use ref in the slice pattern. Oh, you have to get ref. 
Size one equals sizes. Hmm. To get to get a ref. So you're getting a reference to it, not taking ownership of it. That makes sense. You've seen a guy do Lua API with C++, anything is possible. Isn't isn't Lua like meant to be used with like all of, of the other languages? Like, isn't that one of its like main uh, benefits? Um, that's why like so many games use Lua as a scripting language. That that seems pretty cool. Um, I like both Actix Web and um, what's more popular, both. Um, I would say that they serve different markets. So Actix Web is, I would say, more like Express. Uh, if you're familiar with Node.js, um, it's it's gonna it's gonna be like okay, um, just like here's a very basic framework. Just like define your routes, and then it's everything else is up to you. Uh, Rocket is like, here's a bunch of macros that are going to like inject a whole bunch of code. Uh, tell me what you want, and we're going to write a whole bunch of code for you. And uh, that reminds me more of like Rails um, and that kind of thing. So they're slightly different markets. Like Rocket is like going to be um, uh, trying to make it like really easy, but like might be more bulky. It's not trying to be the fastest. Uh, web server out there but i mean i don't know actix web claims to be one of the fastest out there so take it with a grain of salt like every single thing that claims to be fastest is, is hard to like truly measure um that being said i don't think you can really go bad with either of them. i've heard of like big companies using both essentially and rocket works on real rust now like not just nightly so that's awesome no clue only worked with pure Lua for some WoW add-ons back in the day. And that's where that's where I think like a lot of people got their start with Lua and started like realizing that Lua is like a thing that can be used. Uh, but I think a lot of people use it in their in their programming language to like sort of pull that in. And you don't have to create your own language now to sort of like meta program your game. You can just use Lua. Oh, you're going to introduce Rust to the company. Good luck with that. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you uh, you do it good. Epic Blar, good morning. You use Rocket in high availability and high assurance deliveries to devices. That is good to know. So then uh, you trust it to be able to actually do the thing and uh, do it well. Which, like, to be honest, a lot of these big projects just work that way. It's pretty awesome. Rocket has been almost bizarrely stable. It it does seem to uh, update slowly, which to me is usually an indication of of stability. Like there's lots of updates coming in, but they do releases slowly, if that makes sense. Like, hey, we, we know what we're doing and, you know, we're constantly adding code in, but we're not going to release a new like big version uh, until we know it's really working. OK, so we have our trait implementations and I don't think. Yeah, we don't want to add those in. OK, so trait implementations. Or do I want to like note these down? Maybe I want to note these down. So we have like. I don't know, I have to, I have to decide like how I want to like. Oh, can I translate bizarrely? Uh, bizarre, sort of like strange. Uh, it's unusual. Um, it feels it feels wrong that it that it is so stable. Um, how can it possibly be stable? It's 0 0.5. It's not a 1.0 release. That's strange. Uh, that that's that's I think the gist of of what it's what um, Epic is trying to say. Uh, and then Epic, correct me if I'm I'm wrong there. OK, so we have as mute. So basically, we can do these um, 
as mood to change as ref to like get a reference for it uh these are all these are all just like traits that we can apply that we can call on it we can go take a look at it too like see so impul like as mute for arrays function as mute takes a ref mutable reference to self and then it returns everything so it's a pattern that matches everything uh but it's a mutable reference to it that that's pretty much all it is golang or rust i'm i i like rust but i haven't tried golang so i'm biased It's far more stable than most 1.0 software. Uh, I haven't done it enough to like test it out myself, but like that's been my experience with most Rust stuff. So these are all very small, very simple functions that you can see that are implementations on trait. Like borrow is just borrowing it, getting a reference to that. It's, it's cool and, and interesting. Um, like debug is it's basically I think these are just calling debug on the internal thing. This is basically just like, hey, for every single one of these things into OK, so getting the iterator and oh wait, wrong one debug format result debug it's a yeah so it's it's basically doing it doing this thing which is going to call debug on everything inside of it which is the reason why you can only do this if debug exists on the things inside of the array and that's what we see here Now, this is really interesting. Look at this. Impl default for, you know, T32, T4. It, did they, so you said they use a const function to create this. That makes sense then. A const function uh, executes at compile time. So sort of like a macro where it expands at compile time and then gets compiled again they they wrote this in like a function to implement default and then it uh they did it for like every single one of these items here that's kind of interesting i wrote code of kotlin java and groovy you prove you proved golang and it's good um nice I'm, I am, uh, I am certain that uh, Golang is an excellent language. Also, just I'm having too much fun with uh, Rust to go and try check that out too. I want to like dive deeper into Rust and get even better at it. So that's that's my plan. But like, I have no beef against Golang. I think it's also an excellent language, even though I have no experience with it. Well, thank you, Carbo Max, for the follow. Okay, so Oh, thank you, uh Epic Blog. Yeah, this is this is my plan is like in between projects, I'm just going to continue doing this. Like I was looking at the list of everything in the standard library. If I just did this only, it's going to be like a year plus for me doing this every day. Uh so this is going to be just sort of like a eh we're we're gonna we're gonna explore in in between projects in between courses it's gonna be something fun to do we should also do we should all do standard excursions more often it's gonna be interesting you want to introduce this language but in spanish there are not very many non-english speaking like anything really in the programming world like i don't see too many on on youtube uh i know that um 
Uh, CJ from Coding Garden did a Spanish speaking introduction to web development stream um, with a with a guest speaker before. And I thought that was amazing, but there's not very many of them out there that I see. Of course, I'm not searching for them, so maybe there are and I just don't see it. But a lot of them are just in English. So if um, uh, that 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 could be amazing if you want to like write, like create some content for for Spanish. You should always work as much as you can with the language you must enjoy. But if we're talking pure industry standard, Go is going to be more important than Rust, I be you believe. I, I think that they're both going to have their own um, sections. They're, gonna, they're both going to eventually find and carve out their own niches and be important in their zone, even though they can cross over into other zones too. Like that That's my guess. They're, they're both probably going to be important, but not as the same thing. Thought I saw something moving on my desk, but uh, I was it was not. You recently learned about the tri trait and control flow part of the tri trait v2 and just rest standard is so interesting. Yeah, I think the, the biggest problem that I have with the standard library documentation that Rust has uh, is discovery is really hard. If you don't know that something exists, you can't search for it and discovering that it's there is like really hard. But once you know something is there, even if you don't know what it's called, it's actually easy to find it. So uh, I don't know how Rust can like actually solve that problem. Besides, maybe it's just up to us content creators to create the, hey, you can do this. Uh, so the, these are all traits. I, uh, okay, so past default impl hash. So I wonder if I want to be like writing all these down. Okay, so I, I kind of want to like, note, note these down too. So like, can I use we're gonna have like, map. Um, but now this makes me think that I don't want this to be in a database format. Um, because I kind of want this to be in in something else. I'm going to have to think about how to do this. Let's let's do uh, like nightly only methods. So we're going to have map zip slice mute slice each ref, each ref, like these look amazing. Um, each mute. One of your top five forward, looking forward things to do in, in standard is the termination trait. You want to be able to control process termination much more. Um, I have not experiment. I have not written very many like sort of DevOpsy things in or like scripts essentially in Rust. Uh, but I know that you can definitely write like Linux commands essentially and Windows commands. And so like termination would be important in that way. Okay, so we have that. Okay, now the trait implementations. Um, so let's go do like trait implementations. Um, so we have this like as mute. So what is, what does as mute really get for us? It basically is, um, like gives us something as mutable, right? So these are all going to be things that we're going to have to cover in, uh, in traits. So. Can I copy? I sort of can. Here's all these traits. Not 
what I want it to do. Okay. Fine. You're going to make me do it in here. Uh, well, you okay, you kind of worked. So hold on. I want to... What, what's the command for it? No, not that. Not, not that. Not, not that. There, there's a command to like get every line, like to convert a cursor into every line in um, uh, in here. But I don't remember what it's called, and I can't do, I can't like match on that. There's, there's no like single thing that I can match on for these. Uh, and I forget what it's called. Uh, Yay Mook! Yay Mukund! Hello! Good morning! Welcome again! It's awesome to see you here. Oh, and I, I didn't even realize that I had already I already mentioned you. I just did your you, the, the name uh, color is very similar to Epic Blarg on my screen. Um, okay, so I need, let's see, uh, VS code, uh, multi cursor, uh, from selection, like one per line. Oh, shift alt down or shift alt up can also work. Hold on. Can I do that? So shift alt down. No. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, it's like VS Code multiple cursors from section, like one per line. Okay. How do I select multiple? Okay, so here Stack Overflow question. This is exactly what I want to do. How do I do that? Shift Alt I. Okay, Shift Alt I. So I select everything. And I do Shift Alt. There we go. Look at that. Now we can go here, put a dash in, select you all again. Now, now are you going to act a little bit nicer to me? Yeah, you are. Okay. So we can just do these. Uh, these, and we can do some explanations in here if we really need to. Uh, Bull first add, you had a fun discussion with your professor today. He apparently accidentally convinced the class that Booleans don't exist in C. Spent some time talking to him about pre-C99 Boolean logic when C programmers always worked with zeros and ones for Boolean logic. In C99, they introduced the standard bool, uh, .h file, which included the bool keyword and some extra formalities to Boolean logic. Even without including the library, people could since C99 have Booleans using the underscore bool keyword. Interesting, okay. Use the control V on uh, highlighted lines in Vim, but I think it's different in VS Code. Yeah, it is, it is different, but... Um, there is um, there's packages in Vim we can do to like get the multi-line and I can just use like a standard uh, well I couldn't figure out I couldn't use like a standard um, uh, regular expression essentially to um, to do that like in Vim because there's nothing regular about each line but okay so here's the traits so as mute like these are pretty simple I I'm not gonna worry about like any of these because we're gonna get these in the trait section when we go over those. So I'm not going to worry about that. These will eventually be moved up uh, and then copy slice. It's like, are these? So interesting, these are not shown in here. Like copy slice. So hold on.
So that's fascinating. Copy slice isn't. So if I search on this, if I search for copy. Without copying, without copying. Try from where to copy. So interesting. It's um Okay. I, it doesn't like directly implement it. At least according to this documentation, but that, that's fine. Uh, so there's these auto trait implementations, which I think is, is something that like is a little bit weird sounding because like, Hey, we, we there's, there's traits that are like automatically added that we don't have to worry about. What's what's up with that? Um, but the auto trait implementations are basically, yeah, they don't have to worry about them. They're automatically added. We actually saw when we were doing ECS stuff that um, uh, the any trait, which is not even shown here. Is it shown up here? No, it's not shown here. Oh, blanket implementations. Um, oh, blanket and auto are different then. Interesting. Okay, so for auto trade, it's getting things like send and sync because they don't implement anything that like violates send or sync, they're getting send or sync applied to them by the compiler at compile time. It's like, I almost feel like I want to take each one of these. and like break, start breaking them out to their own sections. And I kind of want to like remove this from the database format, but use some of the other features in Notion to like keep these all like sort of working together and like not necessarily use use this. I kind of want to start doing that. It's like take, take you as the array and just move you. Okay. Take all of you. Copied all you, copy you, deep dive into rest, and I'm gonna, uh, let's just do another primitive section. So we're gonna call this primitives. And then in here, we're gonna get page, uh, arrays, then paste you in here. Um, so then each of these should probably be links to like the specific parts of like traits that we're going to eventually look into. So like back into this, um, my plan, I don't think I can do like open up a new, oh, I can do a new window. So inside of wrong one, I want you. Uh, we're doing that one. Explorations, deep dive. Okay, so we have these primitives. I don't need you anymore. Wait. Yeah, I don't need that other one anymore. You can go away. So we're going to go into you. Uh, okay, so traits. So in these traits, um, we're going to have probably like a page for each trait, copy. Um, and then I really want this. So can I have you be a link? Oh, and here's what I think I can do. I can do share, copy link. And we're going to link to page. There we go. That's a link to the like copy where we can go like look at that again. So 
so there's a big conversation going on about like C and like what's allowed and everything else like that. One one big thing that I remember from from C, um, which I don't remember very much, but um, it's C allows you is like one step up from just basically assembler code, right? Uh, but it doesn't like do that many checks. It's it's basically just trusting you as the, the compiler, the, the the coder to like write good code and it will like compile it if it can. So it will let you do all that kind of stuff, which is why you could do all sorts of crazy like um, hacking tools with it. Uh, but at the same time, if you're trying to make real stuff and you do these tricks, you can cause all sorts of problems. So we're gonna take you. I'm just gonna copy over here. Uh, let's... Don't don't do that. Yeah, bring you down here. Implemented. Okay, so I think these are all good, and so then I can all of you and we're going to turn into a page and then for each of these we're going to get the link can i get the link from this yes i can so now I don't think I can like copy this back in and like actually just copy links to it, right? Paste in sync. I can, but it's like not the right ones because if I add a new thing in here, like if I change, if I take you, oh, come on, traits. I guess if I change you, like something. Does that update? It's saving. Yeah, it updates here. But that's the problem is like that's now every trait, which is not helpful. So no, I don't want to do a sync. You. You essentially go away. Uh, stop being asynced. How do, how do I make it stop being a synced thing? I don't know how. Okay. I want you to copy you. And I do that. Link to page. This will take a little bit of, of time, unfortunately. It puts responsibility in a programmer to avoid UB. There are tools like GDB and Valgrind that help, but overall C relies on you understanding the standards. Uh, yeah, and like that's one of the reasons why people like to do it too, is because it, it gives you that power, which is really nice but also really dangerous because uh, we humans have been proven to be not very good at like being consistent to like high quality rules. We constantly think we have a better way to do something or we just get lazy. Uh, we make mistakes and, uh, and then we don't notice them until something like, what is it? The heart bleed attack just suddenly comes in or people like, People do something on purpose uh, and we don't notice it because like we don't know that that thing. And it just looks valid. So yeah, it's one of the reasons I like higher level language that are also systems languages like Rust. Okay, so here's all of you. Okay, so we'll be able to come in and like 
actually see these. Um, as like the the traits we can play with. Uh, so let's see, do those. Check values. Do that. Nightly only methods. We'll, um, we'll probably have like just a method section. Oh, then you can probably become two. Uh, trait implementations. So these are actual traits that are implemented from these. So more more of these. So we have like as mute. So I want to just take all of these out. And put them over here. Can I do that? No. Turn you into pages. Okay, so more more of these. Can I can I reorder you? I don't think I can do something like a an order on that. That that would be really nice. And okay, so we know it's after that. So, nope, don't want. I'm in here. Okay. So can I do um, as mute? Uh, as mute. Oh, look at that! I can. There's Azmute T. Which is similar to this Azmute here. So in, in some ways, I don't need to do that. Um, this is a really cool way to like get new new pages added. And in, in, in Notion, I can just do an at and like mention a page, essentially. So there's this Azmute. There's this Azref. But we see that these exist up here. So I don't even need these listed anymore. Uh, we have this borrow, uh, borrow mute, debug. Uh, default is slightly different. Like we, we kind of mention, I don't even mention default here because it's kind of weird, um, but it's not really all that helpful. So this is gonna be at Default. Um, equal hash index. Okay, is another one. Oh, come on. Index, uh, index mute. Uh, into iterator is implemented up here. Uh, ord partial equal partial ord. Uh, slice pattern is the next one. Uh, and then there's this try from, which is also unique. And uh, I'm just going to take this first try from. And that's all we're going to keep. We're probably going to like rename these to like not have these things in there eventually. That'll, that'll be good. I want to get way away from this. 
I don't know how to anymore. Kind of sucks. But okay, well. Um, then, okay, so those are the auto traits. Did I get the auto traits? Like, rewind, ref, unwind, safe. No, I did not. I didn't get the auto traits yet. Uh, we just got the normal traits. Um, however... I think I'm going to have to continue this tomorrow because it's almost 930. Um, I have stand up in like 15 minutes. I've got to go prepare for that. Um, this is like the new time frame that I'm playing with. Uh, it's giving me about an hour more of sleep every night. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but there are some days that I'm not going to be able to do the stream like on um, every other Tuesday and every other Friday. I have meetings that start at nine. So I'll probably just like skip those streams. So I'll I'll tweet out like the night before. Um, hey, I'm not I'm not streaming today. Uh, or like, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Um, and then, yeah, that, that's pretty much going to going to be the entire thing. So with that, um, uh, I am going to go ahead and call it for a night. So thank you so much for watching. Um, and have a great rest of your Tuesday. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.